All right, we're back on the uh, 1950 model Cub Formal. And guys, I, there's something I happen to think about that I'm going to check on this one. Very common mistake made by many, many people. My daddy always told me, he said, son, equipment needs to know how to breathe. If, if, if it can't breathe, you're going to have problems eventually. So we're going to look at the steering sector on this tractor. And uh, there's a couple of things here I want to talk about with it. One being... This rod right here, when, when it rains, water will run down this rod right here, and when it gets to this seal right here, if this seal happens to be going bad, water will go in the steering gear right here and seep into it. Secondly, this whole section up in here on the other side of this is part of the radiator and the cooling system. See, this tractor doesn't have a water pump on it. This tractor works off of, I believe they call it thermal siphoning. Uh, water comes around through here and goes up into the block up in here and goes back through the radiator. It siphons it backwards and forwards. Well, when that happens, this right here, the steering gear sector, happens to get really hot. Well, because that steering gear sector happens to get hot, it needs to be able to breathe. So what the company's done is the plug right here should have a hole in the side of it. Now, this one, the gentleman painted this tractor before I got it. Of course, I'm gonna have to clean it and do some touch up since I'm rebuilding it. But I'm gonna take this plug out. If I can get a hold to it here. It's maybe a little, there we go, maybe a little tight. Usually they come out pretty easy once you break them loose. Let's see here, yeah, it screws out real easy. And guys, what we're going to be looking for, there should be a hole in the bottom of this plug and there should be one in the side of it. In other words, when this thing here heats up, it allows the pressure to come out. It should be a hole in the bottom of this plug here. If we get where we can see it there, can we get, can we zoom in on that where we can look at it? There we go right there. There's a hole in here, but the mistake that most people make is when they paint them, they paint over the hole and they cover it up. And you look, I don't see a hole anywhere. So, possibly right there. Looks like, and I'm not sure, but it looks like an indention. Well, what we're going to do... Scrape paint off. We're going to have to go through here now. And we're going to start cutting paint off of this thing. Lots of times you'll just see an indention in it. Because what happens is it'll get covered up in dirt. We're going to have to go through here. Oh, let me look. Not there. Go to the next side. Well, we just painted over dirt there. <laughs> uh, I don't see anything there unless... You'll know because you can stick the tip of a knife in it. Let's go to the next side. Well, kind of be careful not to. I'm, I'm using my old pocket knife here to scrape with. Well. Three I'm, for four. Three. Let's try this side. The hole's in the bottom. Maybe it's in the top. We got painted over. Well, it, well, we'll see. I mean, it's supposed to have another hole in it. That hole's supposed to go all the way through. And I'm suspecting that it's been covered up somewhere. That one doesn't look like it has it either. Usually if it's there, you'll the point of the knife will just punch right into it. Oh, let me see something here. Here we go. Ah, first place you went. <laughs> it's actually rusted over. Let me see if I can... I'll be careful not to let that slip. Now that's a tiny hole right there. I have a piece of copper wire here I've been keeping, but it's it's bigger than that hole is. Let's see here. Will it go in this one? Yeah, it goes up in that one. There's probably dirt and everything Look at else. That. Just gunk. It's just gunked all up in there. Can so, you put that in a uh, solution? I'll tell you what we'll do. I've got some carb uh, brake cleaner over here. Let me go spray this thing out with some brake cleaner. All right, I went and got my daddy's old torch cleaning tips. It was his. And I'm pretty sure we'll find one here that'll work in that. 
We're gonna start off with this one right here. Some tiny tips. This one's way little than the hole is. Oh yeah, I felt it push through. Like I said, you need all kinds of tools to work on this thing. I mean, I'm here I am using a antique torch. Antique torch kit thing. I mean, it's not antique. They still use them today. It was just this was just my dad's. Well, it's antique because it's older. They may still make them. Oh, they, I'm sure they still make them. Probably not as good as this one. All right, now to get the inside clean. Yeah, that's pretty it's nasty. It's pretty nasty. <laughs> yep, so let's just take, now that we know that the hole goes all the way through, let's take and lay this down right here. I don't know how much, we'll turn that away from our face because we don't want it blowing back in our face, but I'm almost out of brake cleaner here. Still ain't wanting to come through. This is where a nice shop with the parts washer and all would come in handy, huh? Yeah. We're gonna get it though. The We're nice gonna... shop or just this part? <laughs> to have a parts washer would be nice. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to look in there and see if I can see Doing it. everything old school. Yeah. But that's, it's fun. That's part of it. Okay, I think we're all the way through there. Can you blow uh, some I air? I put my mouth on it since I put the brake cleaner on it. No, I meant your air thing. Do you need it? I think you're through, though. Oh, I see the thing in there now. Yeah, it's 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 gone through. Now the oh yeah, I see that big old wad of trash come out of there. Oh yeah. It's coming out now, ain't it? Coming out now. So okay, that's what we were after right there. Alright. So guys, this is one of the things that you have to be really careful of on this old stuff like this. And you know, there's not any videos out there really hardly talking about this. They talk uh, about the maintenance that most people know about. Yeah, and these are these are like key parts. Uh that has to do with this thing. That's what will blow these seals out and blow the gaskets and blow the one up under the bottom. When this thing builds up with pressure, if it can't get rid of that pressure, it's got to come out somewhere. And when stuff like this, I mean, look how that tiny that is. I mean, that's pretty little right there. Kind of like my uh, pressure canner. You got to have somewhere for that pressure to so come. You got to have somewhere for it to go. And that's the thing about it. So what I'm going to do I'm going to go ahead and repaint this. Well, I think I'm going to put it on here because i got to do some pressure washing. I'm going to just put it back on here. and let, Well, you know something else I want to look at? Is the way to know, I'm going to mention this to know, if you've got a bad seal or anything up here, is we'll look at the oil in there. If that oil is milky, that means we've got water seeping down through some of this stuff getting into there. So let me grab a light where we can look down in that little hole up there. Look down in there. You see that color of that? It's milky. It looks weird. It's a milky color. That means we're getting water in there. So it probably means we got a bad seal here, a bad gasket or something here. Which means that needs to be replaced so that uh, we can do away with having an issue of water getting in here. So. That's going to be another one of our little fix items right there. We're going to have to get two seals. Or a seal and a gasket, should I say. All right. So guys, whenever you're working on these old pieces of equipment like that, keep these kind of things in mind. Now this is a 1950 model Cub Farm All. Check yours out. If you've got one of these, check your plug out to see if your vent stopped up. If it is, clean it out. 
so that you don't have to worry about blowing a seal or something like that because that's what happens these seals blow and then water can run down this rod right here and hit that seal and seep right into it and that's just one of the main issues that we run into on this older equipment like this is just poor maintenance one of the things that a lot of people don't think about on these old tractors is the nuts and the bolts on everything uh, from a 1950 model, a lot of them's in bad shape, and some of them I have to use a nut buster just to get them off, and a lot of them are just so rusted that if you try to turn them, they'll break. It's like these wheel weights. Now, you got the back wheel weights and you got front wheel weights. Now, the front ones are laying on the ground up here because I have the front spindle off. I've got all that coming to be replaced new, bearings and seals and all that stuff, so they're laying there. But what I discovered when I took them off is the bolts were just in really bad shape. So what I've done is I went and bought all new bolts and I went ahead and painted them uh, to match the color of the tractor. So I have all new bolts for all the wheel weights on the front. One of the things that we don't think about is that they're always in the dirt when you're plowing and the bolts get dirty and rusted and everything. So it's better if we go ahead every so often and just try to fix them where we can replace them because the last thing you want to do is to have a flat tire and have to go and try to take a weight off to get this tire somewhere to have it fixed and you can't get the bolts off of it so or either it's so heavy you can't handle it and that's the problem I'm running into here on the back if you'll notice here you can take a look at how these bolts are here they're just so rusted and caked up here they're in really bad shape Plus, they painted over them. And, and they've been painted over over the years. And I, I'll, I'll be lucky if I get it off without breaking it. But what I've done is I've gone back now and I'm replacing them with galvanized carriage bolts to go back in them. Now, I want to show you what one of the bolts originally looked like. The reason I say this, this is one that we took out right here. You see how this bolt is? It's almost begin to rust into right here where it sits inside the rim of the tractor. And if you go to try to turn these off here and this bolt breaks, then you got to put a new one in it anyway. So, or if you're just out in a field plowing, this bolt could break. And next thing you know, your wheel weight's laying off out in the wheels, the field somewhere if they all break and you're just not aware of it. So it's best to go ahead and replace them while we can. So we've done that here. We went ahead and bought all galvanized bolts and nuts and lock washers to replace it with. And I'll be going around the whole tractor on the back of it and replacing all of those bolts in it. And another thing is I just redone the seat on this. Uh, I took the seat off the tractor. I put a new seat cover system on it. And while I had it off, the seat was rusted so bad that I had to literally take a hand grinder and grind all the bottom parts of it off and everything. Well, while I had it off, I went to try to take the bolts out of it and they were just like everything else. They were rusted to the point I almost didn't get them out. So what I done was, is I went back in here, up under here, you can see them. I went back with grade eight bolts. And guys, it's, it's, it's key that all this stuff gets replaced and well taken care of because the last thing you wanna do is have to try to work on something that's in, when you're, you're trying to restore and all the bolts are in bad shape. Now, one of the other things that I've done was the negative battery cable on this tractor. We talked about that in the wiring part of it where the negative battery cable was in such bad shape. So I went online and found the original replacement negative battery cable for this tractor. And when I went to put it on the tractor and try to get it all run through there, I noticed underneath the tractor, it has key places where it's supposed to uh, be fastened. Well, this is what I found. All these pieces like this here, they're just about completely ruined underneath the tractor. These old metal pieces like this that was under there. So what I've done was I went to uh, Tractor Supply and I bought new clamps that has rubber mounted in them. And then I even went a step further and on the battery cable, we'll take a look at that around here. On this tractor here the negative is the uh, actually the hot wire on this it's a positive ground I took the negative battery cable and I went and bought this uh, tubing stuff to put around it here 
because there's one thing I learned as a guy driving an 18 wheeler one time I had one that rubbed up like it was up against a corner like that and it rubbed and it shorted out and set the truck on fire that I was in on the side of a highway um, so I've learned these battery cables like this I wrapped it in it all the way down through it even down into the hangers underneath it down in there where it's at Okay, guys, here is the clamps I went and purchased. Uh, these are uh, metal clamps that are rubber insulated around the outside. I ran the uh, plastic tubing like you run over your electrical wires through that and run the battery cable through it so that in the future we don't have to worry about the battery cable coming in contact with anything to try and short it out. Now, this battery cable will eventually come on around and it'll lay right underneath this uh, piece of metal right here. And up under the hood, up under here, there will also be these types of clamps mounted with the rubber here in the clamps to hold the battery cable up under the uh, hood of the tractor. All right, in routing the battery cable, I ordered the original owner's manuals for these tractors, and it showed the battery cable running underneath the hood right here, coming over, going in behind the distributor down in here, and coming over on top of the starter relay right down here like this and well with me I'm a little concerned about the battery cable being that close to the engine and it getting that hot so I actually put the uh, the rubber tubing stuff on this right here also um, even though it might not be a problem I'm just taking a little bit of an extra step now we have a new one of these ordered right here to go on the starter so we're gonna be replacing all this right now this is just temporarily stuck on here uh, but I'm trying to make sure I have everything lined up the way it really needs to go. So, I wanted to just take this opportunity as you're going through the tractor. I have went ahead and purchased, uh, I have all new stainless bolts of all kinds for the tractor. I bought all the new ones for the wheels. I bought new bolts to go through the whole tractor everywhere that I can think that I need to put a new bolt. And I'm going to try to go back and do that and do a really good job in making sure that if I ever have to take anything off of it, then at that point, I don't have to worry about not being able to get it off because I took the time to put a nice either galvanized or stainless steel bolt back into it so that I don't have any problems with it in the future. So keep this in mind when you're restoring the old antique tractors. All right, guys, one of the other things that we're doing to the farm oil cub is we're getting rid of these uh, back lug bolts. These are the old, old-fashioned ones here. Most of them have rusted to the point that they're rounding off whenever I try to take them out. So I ordered new ones from Steiner's. These are three-quarter inch heads on them. The new ones are 13 sixteenths. These are like an inch and a quarter long. These are like an inch and a half long, or an inch and three quarter. These are a lot longer, a lot larger head on them. It's an upgrade, I think, uh, that uh, Cub Formal made, because these just really are not worth it, guys. And if we're going to restore a tractor, we figure we might as well put the new lug bolts in it, because you don't want to get a tire issue, and then these things like did like with me, round it off, and you have fits trying to get it out of the rear of the tractor. So it's best at this point... To just go ahead and replace them with this and then we take a tap and we go ahead and just tap the hole out because these didn't quite go all the way through the hub the tap kind of cleans the threads out where you don't have to worry about messing them up and they screw in pretty easy so it's just another upgrade to the cub that we thought we would make on it okay we've got one side of the cub done here we replaced all the lug bolts in one side of it here now we're going to jump over and see if we can do the other side. We're doing them one at a time so we don't actually have to pull this big heavy 150 pound wheel weight off here plus the tire and all that. Uh, just don't feel like trying to handle that. The next thing we'll be doing once we get these out of here is we're going to replace these square head bolts up in each one of these with brand new ones because these are getting in pretty rough shape also. Okay, guys, on the uh, International Cub Form All, we are replacing all of the bolts that bolt the rim to the hub. These are all new bolts. Uh, the ones that was in there was all rusted up and in kind of bad shape. We figure if we're going to go this far, why not just go ahead and fix it so if we ever have to take the tire off, it won't be that big of a deal. So we've uh, actually repainted the rims. 
We repainted the center of the tire here. We put all new lug bolts on the inside of that, got them painted. Put new bolts in these. Wheel weight bolts is new. Uh, we put, This is the last one I've got to go right here. We're going to be putting these in. Uh, they just push in like that. And then the nut goes on the back side. All you can do is put your finger in it and hold it like that. It's made to hold itself and take the nut on the back side. Run it down. Snugs up. Then we'll get our pull handle and our three quarter inch socket and we'll tighten them babies down. We'll have this side done and then we're gonna move over and do the other side. All right guys, we're back out here on the Cub One uh, Farm All uh, 1950 model. We have installed the fan belt and the generator belt. The fan belt requires a three quarter inch slack on it. The generator belt requires one quarter inch slack on it. And the way to tell is to measure the up and down slack like this is one quarter inch and then your your big one here will be three quarter inch when you mash it in and out. Now, what we've got to do, this clutch, the fan housing here has to have oil put in it. And you wanna turn this uh, screw hole right here till it's in a horizontal position uh, facing out to the side here. Now we're gonna see, I hope this screw will come out of here. Mm, yeah, there we go. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this screw out of here Get it out. You don't want to drop it. Okay, now what we're going to do in this little hole here, we're going to put the same oil that goes in the engine in this. We're going to use a little uh, pump can here until we fill this thing up. To back out a little bit to make sure when I have it. Not running out yet. You want to pump it till it runs out this hole. Now what you want to do in order to get this oil level at the right level, you want to turn this till it's straight at the bottom and let any excess oil drain out. You want it to run out till it stops. So and will it, any stay in there? Yes, it will stay in there. Based on the way it's made, it will stay in there. The right amount will actually stay in it. And the um, rest will come out. Yes, the rest will come out. Okay, once it stops dripping out, then you want to turn it back up to the side I can get my hand up in here to turn this. This is the proper way to actually fill that full of oil. Now I'm going to try to explain this to you, um, how it works. Let me put the screw back in here. This screw, can you see the length of this screw? There is a, a tip sticking out inside that fan this tall. And when you Turn that fan upside down, that tip is sticking up like this, and there's a level line across inside there that once the oil fills up to that level, it comes out and runs out that hole that this screws in. So that is the purpose for doing it that particular way. Now we're going to put this screw back up here. I'm going to tighten it back down. All right. That is the correct procedure for filling up the fan housing on a Cub Formal. Now what I've got to do now is I'm going to clean this oil up in this because the last thing you want in a radiator is any kind of oil substance around this right here because it will dust will collect there. So make sure you go back and you clean up all of the excess oil that's dripped out. Well guys, we've got it all back together now. It is time to see if it's all going to work. Uh, not sure. I mean, I uh, I want to show you what I did do. Though I made a new gas line here out of steel. 
Uh, it's a brand new one. Uh, I cut it. I got all the equipment down here. All this kind of stuff to cut it, reflare it, and all that kind of stuff. I made me a new gas line with some brass fittings and stuff. I uh, got it hooked up to the sediment bowl underneath there. I don't have any leaks right now, so that's a good thing. So we're fixing to see if, uh, you know, it's a new carburetor, so we don't know what to expect. But it comes from the factory. It's supposed to be kind of preset. So we'll just kind of see how it does here. Now we're going to make sure we're in neutral. Now that we're in neutral, um, we'll choke it. Pull out our little lever there. Okay, it's showing. All right. Well, guys, the moment of truth. Oh. We're going to take it out from under the she shed. We're going to take it out from under here and get everything cleaned up. Uh, I'm going to probably power wash it off and make sure it's all good and clean. Got to put the grill on. I got to put the grill on. I just didn't want to go all the way yet until I knew it was going to be okay. But Lucy is fixing to go out from under here. Oh, I'm excited now. I am excited. Soon. I didn't realize how wop-sided it is. Yeah, it sits that way on purpose. That's what you can see. <laughs> But it looks better with the red. It don't look so bug-eyed. Yeah, it looks good. I got lights. I got to put the grill on it now and all that kind of stuff and rewire the lights here. Get my plug-ins all put on that. Ah, I am so excited that I've got it back together now. And it works. And it works. I get all this other stuff done. We're going to take her for a maiden trip. All right, we got our new floor mat, too. We haven't showed the floor mat. Oh. You did get a floor mat. Yeah, we got a new International Harvester formal floor mat. But I'm fixing to move this baby out from under my she shed. Let's just look. Say, yep, all that's got to go back ah. to the shop. All right, let's just try it here and see what happens. I think he's headed back to my she shed. I better go see. Uh oh. No, 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 no. You better stop outside the shed. It's outside. 